So let's see what are the most common types of the graphs. Uh, so we have graphs that can be used to show the distribution, like the histograms, uh, box plot, and also the scat plot. Uh, we may have learned those uh, from the statistics. Uh, we also have the line graph and also bar graphs. Uh, we also have graphs without axes, like pie graph and also clock graphs. Uh, we also have the three-dimensional graphs. So the graphs also can be classified into like uh, simple graphs. So that just show um, the variation of only one single variable. So for example, the histogram is only normally used to show the distribution of the single variable. A complex graph, so that is used to show the multivariables. Okay, and also we have a compound graph. So that means that display data that rearranged so that total magnitude of the combined data are representing the topmost portion of the graph. And we will see some examples later. All right, so first let's look at the histogram. So histogram is used to show the occurrence of the data values in a statistical distribution. Okay, so basically this is used to show a single variable. So for example here, uh, we are looking at how the price are distributed. So we're using a histogram where the x are just the, uh, the range, so 0 to 2k, 2k to, uh, uh, to 4k, etc. And also for the y, so that is the number of the records within each range. Okay. Uh, so in this case, we can see we have a lot of diamonds that in, in this lower uh, price range. And also we have a few diamonds that are very expensive. Okay. And we can also add a, a, a cumulative percentage line here so that to show that. So um, the total number of records of the, of the total percentage. Okay. And we can see the 50% is right here. So that means uh, most of the low price diamonds are uh, more than 50% are in this lower range. And if you, if you still remember the normal distribution, so for normal distribution, it is a bell curve. So the histogram should look like the bell curve. Okay. Uh, the second uh, graph is called the box plot. So box plot is used to show the percentile summary of the data set. It is used to, to compare two or more data set that to compare their uh, distributions. Uh, so this is how the uh, box plot look like. So the middle bar is a median value. It's not a mean value. It is a median value. And within this box, we have this upper and also lower quantile. So that is value that is uh, 25% of the data is greater than this value and also beyond this range that is 25% of the data less than this value. Okay, so within this box, we have 50% of the data. And we also, the bars are called minimal and also maximal. However, remember that the minimal and also maximal are not the biggest or the smallest values because we still have the outliers. So outliers are defined that the values that is more than three by two times of the upper quantile or less than the lower quantile. Okay, so that is those are called outliers. So again, the minimal and also maximal values in the scatter plot uh, do not con uh, include those outliers. So this is an example that using the scatter plot. So we can see the the price in those the price of diamond in those three categories. So we can see this one has a lower median value and this one has a lowest median value and this one has the highest median value. And both those two categories have very high uh, maximum values. However, uh, for the red ones, uh, it has a lot of outliers. Uh, so if we compare this one uh, with a normal distribution, so you remember that for the normal, this is a P, uh, PDF. Uh, so that is a um, probability 
density function. Okay, uh, so the box re uh, refer to the 50% 50 per 50 of the data. Uh, for the normal distribution, so if we use a one standard deviation, so that is about roughly about 70% of the data. Okay, so that is within the mean value and also plus or minus one standard deviation. Okay, so they are slight, slightly different. And uh, it is easier uh, that for us to compare the, um, the values, uh, the statistical distribution among different variables. However, be careful that not all the people are familiar with a box plot because box plot still requires some basic knowledge of the statistics. So uh, if your audience are not familiar with box plot, so you may box plot may not be the best choice uh, in that case. Okay, another very popular uh, visualization a uh, uh, graph is called scat plot. So scat plot is used to show the relationship of two continuous variables. Okay, so for example, here we see the relationship between the weight and the price of the diamond, and it is very clear that we can see we see a positive relationship and also a positive nonlinear relationship. Okay, we know that when the diamond, the weight of diamond get bigger, the price will also be higher. So sometimes we can also change uh, the scat plot so that we can add additional um, variables. For example, we can change the, the size of those dots or we can change the color of those dots. Uh, in this case, for example, I'm changing the size of the dot to represent the clarity. Okay, uh, so that we can see that how the clarity will play a role in determining the price. And this is an example that they are using, showing the relationship between the height and also weight. Okay, so those are some a real person's data. Okay, height and weight. And this is another uh, very important, interesting uh, uh, visualization. So ideally, this is also a, a scatter plot, but instead of using those dots, they are using a real person's images photos so that a person that within this range so they use a photo of that person to show the relationship between the weight and also the height okay so that is a, a very interesting uh, visualization of, of a scat plot okay um, another very common visualization is called line graph so line graph is used to show the trend of multiple variables. So the trend means that the temporal change. Okay. Um, so the individual variables can be identified by using the different colors or the styles of the lines. Okay. So in this case, we can see here with a number of tweets or different variables that over the time, and we can see there's a clear peak during that day so that we have a lot of um, users okay tweet users okay so that line chart we can see the variation of different variables and uh, let's see some real world examples so this is from the again Fox News so what is a problem of this line chart okay so there are a lot of issues right the first of all they don't they didn't start from zero and secondly the time intervals are not equal right so it's not log arithmetic scaling it's not also a risk arithmetic uh, arithmetic scaling so they are not using the equal intervals and there's there is not also not a good reason to do that and also if we put the real data and also if we start from the zero and also we put the equal intervals and we can see they clearly they are talking about a different story so we see a clear peak increase in that time period which we didn't see in the previous line chart and this is also a real 
word example. So that is uh, from Google, quarterly uh, revenue growth rate. OK, and first we see that those different quarters, but we don't know what which year they are. So it's kind of the meaningless. OK, and this goes even further with the labels. OK, so that they are plotted on top of everything now. OK, and this one that even more data labels making it impossible to read. OK. And also, if we look at the y axis, so in the unit of one key dollars, to avoid adding three zeros to those numbers. So why not use millions or even billions? OK. And also, this is another one that from the Fox News again. Um, again, this is some of the slides are created by this uh, person. So I don't know why um, uh, this professor like examples from Fox News. So what is a problem on this line chart? OK, they, they didn't start from zero, right? And did you see anything else? OK, and if you look at this one, OK, so this one is not even accurate, right? This is should be 9%, not 8.6%. 8, 8 OK, so those are some uh, bad examples. 